Inside U.S. military bases in Iraq, thousands of laborers work in a situation that is difficult to describe as anything other than debt bondage. Oh, you guys are all in the car, in the car, in the car, in the car? Yeah, in the car. Yeah. I'm in the car. Yeah. So how much, how much did you guys pay to come? How much? Huh? When you came to Baghdad, how much you paid? To get their jobs, these men paid labor brokers thousands of dollars up front. But because they're poor, they took high interest loans to pay the brokers. How much do you need? 4,000. 4,000? Yeah. In the call? Yeah. Okay. 4,000 dollars? Yeah. And you? 4,000? 4,000? Yeah. How, how did you get 4,000 dollars? Mm -hmm. You take a loan? Love it. What percentage? Show me on paper. This man took a $4,000 loan to get his job. Every month he pays $120 in interest. In one year he pays $1,440 in interest. That makes it a 36% interest loan. Wow. This is his pay stub. He works for a Dubai-based company called Prime Projects International, which in this case is a subcontractor to KBR. He works 12 hours per day, and even though the pay stub doesn't say it, he works at least six days per week. That means his hourly wage is less than $2. On this base, the food service is run by a KBR subcontractor called Gulf Catering. Gulf Catering is a Saudi Arabian company, but most of their employees in the dining facility are from South Asian countries. These men live in a company-run camp outside the base perimeter. Is this for the guys live? Is this for the guys live? Oh yeah, Gulf Catering. So how many guys are living here? No, maybe Wow, one thousand. That's a lot of guys. So in one, in, one, in one trailer, how many guys are living? One room, uh, 12. 12? Uh, 30. And 12, 12 guys in one no, room? Uh, yeah, two six. Day six, I might. You're kidding. No, six people, seven people, day, going, night people, six, seven people. I wasn't allowed inside the trailers to see how the men were living, so I took the camera to a different group of workers and they passed it to a Gulf Catering employee. His pictures show the space he shares with 11 other men. Six sleep in the day and six sleep at night. Many of the men have been living like this for years. Look, I'm not trying to cause trouble. I don't know the rules. If there's a rule that he cannot leave, no problem. I was only curious. I thought, he's a friend of mine, I'll stop and ask, and that's all. You know? But I think maybe there's rules that he shouldn't leave, it seems. Is that correct? Now we have rules. This all coming is, you know, we are, you know, we are, this is the coming. All vehicle coming, take the stop and go to other company. I see. That's why we have stopped the vehicle. Oh, really? Oh. We, have, we are running short of the shop now. You're running short of people? Short of the people are. Oh, I see. Because they're going to other companies, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The farthest I was led into the camp was the guardhouse. Ah, oh, thank you so much. $4,000? You pay. Right. You pay? I know. I know. And you pay 4000 And you make 350 in one month? Yeah. How's it The supervisor revealed another layer of the story. We don't have, because we are, we are, we cannot enter the Iraq. They are illegal stuff. We cannot be allowed to come to Iraq. Indian law. We cannot enter the India, Tiranga, Nepal, if the war comes, we are not allowed to come here. We are coming in Dubai for the city. And in Dubai, we are coming here illegal. That's why we are able to get anything. How do you get from Dubai here? This place, that is fine. Airplane. Yeah, that's fine. It's from the new passport. They, but they don't take your passport in. No. No passport? No passport here. Yeah. But they don't take this is a document from the U.S. State Department website with guidelines to define human smuggling and human trafficking. Case study number two reads, 
A recruiting agency in India was looking for welders to work at a company in the United States for $10 an hour. The agency charged each prospective worker a non-refundable $2,500 application fee. En route to the United States, the workers were given contracts to sign. The contracts obligated the workers to work for the next six months for less than $3 an hour. They were told to sign the contracts or they would be sent back home. The workers felt that they could not back out because they'd invested all of their savings and were already on their way to the United States. Once they arrived, they were confined to the factory grounds and the owner of the company kept their passports. Were the workers smuggled or trafficked? The workers were victims of severe forms of trafficking in persons. The workers were transported for the purposes of labor through the use of fraud and coercion, which resulted in the workers being subjected to involuntary servitude. Confiscation of the workers' passports by the employer also caused the workers to believe that they were forced to stay with the company. During the 21 months that I was in Iraq, I spoke to dozens of these laborers, and none had been forced to surrender their passports. However, none of the men I spoke to had copies of their contracts, nor had they ever read their contracts in their native language. All of them had paid large fees to labor brokers, and some believed that they were brought into Iraq illegally. In addition, none of the men I spoke to had ever been told about the Defense Base Act. The Defense Base Act is a decades-old provision that provides compensation for disability or death to people employed on U.S. military bases outside the United States. While all of the workers I spoke to were entitled to these insurance benefits, none of the men I spoke to were aware of it, though they were working in a place that was inherently dangerous. The companies using these laborers are not limited to just a few Middle Eastern subcontractors. Dozens of companies are using their services, including some very familiar names. Hey guys. Hey, how much did you get? You guys told me the other night, you said you made, made $400 a month? Yes, sir. Good God, man. But you work 12 hours a day? Seven days a week or six days? No, no more 12. You have one day off? So it's six days a week, 12 hours a day. Wow. Did you have to pay money to get here? Okay. $5,000 to get here, and you make a dollar fifty an hour. I some dollars, I still have to send you Gotcha. Uh-huh. Okay. In 2006, the Chicago Tribune reported on orders issued from General George Casey's office that addressed the rule of law inside U.S. military bases in Iraq. Quote, the memos say the military also confirmed a host of other abuses during an inspection of contracting activities supporting the U.S. military in Iraq. They include deceptive hiring practices, excessive fees charged by overseas job brokers who lure workers into Iraq, substandard living conditions once laborers arrive, violations of Iraqi immigration laws, and a lack of mandatory awareness training on U.S. bases concerning human trafficking. Under future contracts, Casey is requiring that all firms, no matter how far down the chain, provide workers with a signed copy of their employment contract that defines the terms of their employment. He's ordering that contracts include measurable and forcible standards for living conditions and establish 50 feet as the minimum acceptable square footage of personal living space per worker. Contractors and subcontractors also must comply with international laws regarding transit, exit, and entry procedures, requirements for work visas, and Iraqi immigration laws. The orders also mandate that future contracts and subcontracts include language that prohibits contractors and subcontractors at all tiers from utilizing unlicensed recruiting firms or firms that charge illegal recruiting fees. This report was published in the spring of 2006. Production on this film started three years later in the spring of 2009.